These days, there is a huge market for books about unleashing the power of the self, the potential of the individual, and that is essentially the philosophy of the American author Ayn Rand. And I've come to Borough Market in London to meet a commentator and broadcaster who says he can explain her philosophy through the medium of lettuce. So Charlie, why do you like Ayn Rand and what does she have to do with lettuce? Well, first off, The Fountainhead was a book that just changed my life. It was a book I could not put down. But as to the lettuce, my father was a greengrocer. Maybe you've had this happen where a, a parent says something that seems so innocuous at the time that holds great meaning. He was stacking lettuce one day in his shop and he turned to me and he says, you know why I made a pyramid? I said, no, Dad. He said, because I can. I'm my own boss. No one tells me how to stack the lettuce. So that simple act of stacking the lettuce was so Randian in that he was the author of his own destiny. No one told him how to stack the lettuce. Okay, that was a pyramid of lettuce. Let's take you to a steel and glass pyramid. Not far from here, the Shard, which also has a lot to do with Rand. Okay. Ayn Rand was a Russian emigre, fiercely anti-communist, unconventional in both her thoughts and lifestyle. Even her fans found her tricky. But Dr Elizabeth Fraser of Oxford University says her books, The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, were powerful. She's inspirational. Her vision of free market society has inspired so many people. Very, very controversial. But if there were a prize for the author who's got the most people saying, I read this book and it changed my life, she would win it. Well, Charlie, we are now surrounded by the most incredible view from the Aqua Shard restaurant in the Shard in London. But I'm just wondering, what was Ayn Rand's worldview? Her worldview would have been the people that built this view, that built the Shard. She loved heroic men of vision that had intellect. And, and this building in particular, if you go up, it's a cathedral, not to God. She was an atheist, but a cathedral to the powers of mankind. Men were her gods. She tended to present philosophical ideas as though they were her own invention and that really estranged serious thinkers and serious politicians as well. It was extraordinary that she refused to cooperate politically, including with people who really liked her ideas and would have liked her to be a figurehead for new conservatism in the 20th century. She was very sectarian and capable of being very nasty. However nasty, though, how many other political philosophers have had their books turned into a movie with its enigmatic catchphrase, who is John Galt? My metal, your railway. It's us who move the world. Atlas Shrugged is all about railways, steel and building a bridge, but a little bit like the one we're standing next to, which is a little ugly, a little grubby. People seem to think that Randian philosophy is a bit the same, supremely selfish. Is that fair? No, not if you define selfishness the way Ayn Rand did. Selfishness is about the self, being true to your own ideals, taking care of yourself first and foremost, not living off the state, not living off of others. I think it's a more noble way, and if, if you could do that, Think of how the welfare roles would, sh would, would shrivel up, how society would be more better off. It's, I think, a far better philosophy than uh, living off the state. Now, it's not just that many wouldn't agree with that, but in October 2011, some were prepared to camp out on the streets in front of St Paul's Cathedral to demonstrate their opposition to such views. But actually, Rand herself predicted all that. So, Charlie, we've come from the Shard, a cathedral, if you like, to man's ingenuity. Here's a real cathedral, St Paul's, but she wouldn't have gone in there because she was an atheist. There's a cathedral to Mammon, if you like, the stock exchange over there. But the reason we're here is because of something that happened recently that you think makes Anne Rand relevant to today. Yes, if you look over to the side of us is where the protesters were, the uncut and the 99%. And she described in her books this dystopian state, this welfare state, 
The leechers and the moochers, the moochers are the ones wanting the money, the entitlement state. The leechers were people like the church or the government demanding on a moral imperative that companies pay more tax and give more money. It's easy to be altruistic with other people's money. This was a dystopian welfare state that she described in her books, the collectivism that she hates. But the answer also that she did give was she said, it's trade, it's commerce, it's jobs, it's a flourishing economy. That's what lifts people out of poverty, not giving them money. That's why Ayn Rand is relevant for today. By the way, who is John Galt?